winner of the $100,000 Manitoba Derby. It's Max Broken Pal back to Bonanza down the rail. Mr. Expedient. Speed stretch approaching the wire, and it's going to be Smuggler's Hole to take the $2,000. Manitoba Jockey Club acknowledges that we are on Treaty 1 territory and that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Ojibwe, Dakota and Dene peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We pay our respect to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this land. And welcome everybody to ASD Live brought to you by Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries Day 14 on your racing calendar let's take a quick look back at wednesday's racing action who is hot well jockey tim tarasenko was as he had two wins on the card but so did jockey ronald alley and that vaulted him into a second place tie with praven badry antonio whitehall still on top with 19 jorge carreno and demario bino they're at 10 and on the trainer side tom gardipi jr now in the lead with 10, hot on his heels. Jerry Gorno with 9, Wendy Anderson with 8, Lee Pruitt and Jared Brown with 6. That rounds out the top 5 stretch. Taking a look back at last week, seemed like an even and honest racetrack. Yeah, you, you couldn't have uh, nailed it uh, closer. Monday was a slight fast, Tuesday is very slow, or just a little bit slow. And in fact, Wednesday was dead on par. It was the first time... Um, all year that there had to be basically no no uh, adjustments. You mentioned we're on day 14. It's kind of flying by about 25% through. Um, I, I find the next, you know, next six weeks kind of prime time to really make some money. You've seen all the horses run a couple times. Now you're kind of, uh, you kind of know where they belong a little bit. They've, uh, you'll see tonight, many of them of like four or five out of the seven are, are run against. That's why it's watching uh, the replays making some uh, notes. So, like, for example, I made a note last week, Kurt, that uh, that a horse went a mile and couldn't go a mile. Looked fine, it just couldn't finish. So 
In my notes, I'll wait for this horse when the trainer drop, cuts him back. If he keeps him at the mile, I probably pass on it. So it doesn't always have to be um, good trouble lines. It could be the other thing, just like uh, a really good dream trip and the horse won. Maybe make note of that. There's, a horse could lose and have a terrible trip. And, and so that's where you can uh, make a little bit of extra money. And how about this week, Kurt? We got a stake race each day. All three of our competitive stake races, very exciting, plus a bunch of optional claimers. So it's a super week. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, lots of great racing. Well, let's see some of that. Let's kick it off with an allowance optional $10,000 claimer. Four three-year-olds and up. They're going to go the seven furlong distance stretch. What do you have? Looks like the same as me to start it off. Yeah, so uh, I thought the horse was a, a good first race. Uh, kind of kept coming and trying to get to the winner uh, handily for second, which, which I do like. I'm expecting uh, improvement uh, even from that race. And, and if you look back at the races at Central Century Mile, um, some solid races. I think the horse is even better going a, a little bit longer on a few of them. Um, and so that's why he made him the top pick. We, we noticed uh, Century Mile will be talking about uh, if they can run here or not over the surface. This one we know can. But it was training here. It was training. That, that's that's a, a big difference. That is a big and difference. Just ship and run. Yeah, a very good point and something to kind of compare. We'll, we'll go from there. Then let's go to the two as my second selection. I thought the, the race looks uh, ran better than it looked on paper. Uh, it was a very tough field last time. I think if the horse runs similar, uh, puts the horse uh, kind of in the mix. It, it, I think, again, probably going to improve. This horse definitely likes to go the two turns. And... Uh, if, if somebody lets this horse go, Mike just uh, could steal it. Or morning line, well, they got 9-2 to two right now. 6-1 to one is with the morning line. For me, it's just a, a sneaky kind of shot, take a shot in the dark on this horse because there's just enough to like. And then the, the five horse is my third selection. I think this horse is going to just sit just off. Um, can handle the two, if, if can handle the two turns, there's a couple not so good ones. That's why I have it the third pick. So let's go 6-2-5. Yeah, I'm with you on Gray Admiral. I think this horse might be pointed towards the front end. And even if it sits just off it, I don't have a problem with that. Such a good first outing against Trumpum. This horse is predominantly running route races in Alberta last year. So I'm expecting it to improve off that. And you really don't have to improve much to get to the winner's circle. That's why currently on the board at 3-5, to five, he's my top play. I also like number one, Ethan's Animal. What a great race, first time out against Toil and Trouble and Hard West. Made a really good close to run fourth. The comeback race doesn't look good at all as he tried to rally from 11th. Ended up 7th beating 7, but on those two days, June 5th and June 6th, 12 of the 14 winners went wire to wire. So if you're in 11th, you think you're going to get a piece of it? I don't. <laughs> so that race... I think is much better than it shows on paper. A nice sharp workout coming in, a half mile in 48 and four, and they had a shadow roll on. So that's my second choice. And I do also like the boss factor. Good race last time out. Tom Gardapi on absolute fire. Didn't really threaten second for Gray Admiral, but I think this horse will also, uh, that it took to the surface. It won't mind the seven furlongs at all. Hoping for a pace battle to run them down. So I'm going to take it for third. I'm giving you six, one, and five. Now we're going to carry on to race number two, a $5,000 claimer. For three-year-olds and up, that are non-two-lifers. On the seven-and-a-half furlong stretch, what do you got? Yeah, so the, 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 for the, the one horse, this, this is his distance. If you look, uh, kind of compare it last year's race. The first start was going short, finished third. And then the next start going seven, won the race. I kind of see the, the same kind of uh, the pattern here. I was surprised that this horse ran as well as, as uh, he did, just to close. I, I, at best, it was kind of a third-place pick. So anyway, I just I see this horse getting the trip, going back to last year's kind of trend, so we'll go there. He was going to be my second selection. I uh, will be the big favorite. Uh, makes a big drop in class. Um, has a really good work coming in. So if it, uh, this horse was scratched on June 12th at the same level for five, the five non-two. But if this horse runs back to the workout, watch out. If I always find these horses kind of tricky of, of where to place them. There's not going to be much value. So that's why I tried to trying to beat them. And then the last one, uh, I went to the six, drops back to the right, uh, the five non-two level was up front. Uh, I didn't really like him going to the right to the lead, but uh, you've got, he's in the mix. I've got the one, I've got one, two, six, but I can almost box them. 
Walker. Yeah, yeah, I mixed it up too, uh, but I do like my boy Christian. This horse was running all route races at Fort Erie and Woodbine. Ren on the front end last time out. Yeah, it wasn't the right place to be against Pop Oscar Whiskey. But today, there is no speed in the race. This horse does get out on the front end. Don't expect 23, 46 fractions. Expect more like 24 and 4, 48 and change. And if that is the case, I think my boy Christian can run all the way around wire to wire. I do like number one, Runaway Hurricane. Same reasons as Stretch. Ran an even race. Uh, first time out last year. Got beat by Anchor Up. That was a horse that went wire to wire. Got beat by a horse that stalked the speed in that first outing. Frank's reload, but ran absolutely game. Draws the inside. Great pose position. So I think has a big shot. Number two, Arrogance. Same thing as Stretch. This horse will be a low price. Why is it all the way down here? Yes, good works. But is that just good enough for me to jump on the bandwagon? Not today it isn't. So I'm going to pick it in third. We're going to take, I'm going to take six, one, and two. Now we're carrying on to race number three. Pick it off jackpot, pick five, wagering with our feature race on the day. It's the Golden Boy Stakes. Four three-year-olds on the road to the Manitoba Derby and a field of seven go postward stretch. What a race this is! It, no kidding. And we got in the third race to kick off the pick and five. And we ended up with the same horse. Yes, we did. We did. We we had kind of <laughs> handicapping how the race is going to go. Um, uh, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to all the stake races. Uh, this one's going to be interesting, too. Um, and you're probably thinking, how did Kurt and I both take the six after the seven beat this horse by, uh, was it two or two and a half lengths or so, and quite handily? Well, it's it's quite simple. We're now going. We're going from five furlongs to six furlongs. The seven is a solid sprinter. That is absolutely his strength. Now he's got to go that extra furlong. Was it Oaklawn and, and struggled a little bit, but I think the horse is is figured it out. But he's going to have to press the two. There is so much speed in here. Not just the two, but there's about three or four minimum other speed horses and one closer. So at four to one, the six is going to be sitting in the just. Uh, in a pretty good spot, and and if if the cl- if the track is playing fair, that's all we need is a fair racetrack. Puts the horse right there. Uh, it is my top selection. Then we go to the the two horse uh, coming from Century Mile. Here's what Kurt just said in the intro. Hasn't been working out. We saw um the other day uh, on Wednesday was it Big Hug or is it a Tuesday? Yeah, Big Hug. Big Hug. Yeah, Ra- coming in looked like a, a pretty good play. And kind of got spinning his wheels in, in the, the dirt. The other one ran better. So you're not sure what you're going to get. I watched his replay. Looks solid. Good work. But at a different track. Is going to get pressure. But could just be the speed of the speed and kind of keep going. And then I'm not going to leave the seven off my top three. Just looks so good in the first two starts. We'll have to probably put away the other speed and hold off uh, our top selection. Certainly can do it. Uh, six, two, seven in a great stake race. Yeah, I'm with you, Stretch. I see a battle on the front end, and that's why I went to Saxon Saga. Saxon Saga chased Chicago's Gray, who is unpressured every step of the way and was easily second in there. I don't think this horse wants to go to the lead, and it won't be able to in here, plain and simply. Chicago's Gray will be gunned. Cuban Cobra and Blazing Bow, I think those are the other two speed of the race. So I think there could be a massive hookup in here. Ronaldo Cumberbatch has a lot of patience. I think he's going to be sitting in right behind. And if we get that four to one stretch, we're going to be drooling at post time. I also like number seven, Chicago's Gray. How can you not? Two easy wins. The only question mark today is the six furlongs. Will it be able to go all the way? That race at Oakland going six furlongs, the last one had a seven length lead. And then the horse hit a brick wall down the lane. To run second. I don't know if that's because the jockey actually hit the horse because it looked like when he was hitting it, the horse was sulking. So far, jockey Jorge Carreno hasn't needed to pull out the whip on Chicago's great. But if it does clear, I think it has a big shot of going a long way. And how can you not like number two, Cuban Cobra? Six starts, four wins, two seconds. Has already won here at Assiniboy Downs as it won the Winnipeg Futurity last year. And that was a really good race by Cuban Cobra. I think he's totally on form. So he's going to be a major player. I'm taking six, seven, and two. Now we're carrying on to race number four, kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering 
For a $5,000 claimer for three and up at our non-two lifers, they're going to go only five furlongs, scratch the six, great vision, stretch. What about this one? Well, we got uh, we got five of them today. Five, oh, there we go. Five, yeah. five of the six, so, so we well, missed. Well, that makes uh, sense, though. Yeah, if it you does, look it, at my ticket. It, does, it completely you, makes sense, yeah. for sure. And so, yeah, take note, we're only going five furlongs, so you really have to pay attention the rest of the year because it, you just assume that always kind of go six, and then they throw in this five furlong. And so, sure, they're obviously going five. You've got a lot of speed horses in here. Uh, the one last time showed a fair amount of early speed, and, and I didn't like that the horse went right to the lead. I think this horse is a little bit better if it kind of just sits just off the pace. And I think if that happens and lets the other ones go, it might back up, and this one might inherit the win. I, I just uh, I, I just like that first race, but I just didn't like the running style. Got to use him. I'm using a bunch in the pick four. And then uh, I'm going to go to the five as, as uh, my second choice. This horse had a, had a, a start. Even just a run around the track probably would have been my top selection. Concerned that it's a kind of a seven-month layoff, and the workouts just started uh, back in May. So I don't know if the horse got here late or just wasn't ready, but you look at those races at Louisiana Downs, and that would certainly make this horse tough to beat. I think this horse certainly can get there with the right trip if the horse is ready to run. That'll be the key. And then then we'll go to the two as my uh, third selection. We'll, we'll probably be the favorite. Two back run. It runs If it runs that race, watch out. Kind of my notes are saying this horse is a need the lead horse. If the horse does get the lead, I think the horse potentially could be long gone and just kind of keep going. Probably lack some value, but uh, it's uh, clearly wide open. One, five, and two. Yeah, I see speed coming out of the one, two, and three in here. So I wanted to take a horse that stalks, not a deep closer. So I went to number four, get up early. Great race first time out. As Jersey Shadow went to the lead and get up early, was the stalker in there. Those two engaged. They battled down the lane, only to lose the photo. I don't think get up early is fast enough to be on the front end. And I think that'll be a huge advantage. We'll be able to go down to the rail as they hit the head of the lane. It always parts, and uh, you get a smooth rail trip. You could save a lot of lengths, and I think that's what Jockey Jorge Carreno should do in here. Whether he does or not is a different question, of course, because they got the horsepower underneath them. Easy for us to say, but get up early, I think, has an absolute perfect running style for this race, and with a dream trip, can get it going. Number three, Mia's Majesty, also ran a really good race last time out. Kind of muddied up, third beat and eight, but drop a caribou. Has now won three in a row. So that horse is uh, definitely a tough one that you're not going to be able to beat. My boy Christian jumped up to the 10 on two after that. Ran a respectable third in there. You're going to see how it does in the early race today. And that maybe might help me as Majesty get put up in the win position. And I do like Jambi. Same reason as Stretch. Some of those races, Louisiana Downs, Will Rogers, or Lone Star, those are all good enough to win in a stalking role. So I'm going to give you four, three, and five. Now we're carrying on to race number five, a $5,000 claimer for Phillies and Mayors, three and up. At our non-two lifers, they're going to go six furlongs. Scratch number six, Ask the King. And that is a huge scratch to the whole round out of the race. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You, you can all, basically, I'm cutting all of morning line prices in half on this. So it's just a, kind of a good guide. Uh, just to have, be prepared, because if you're seeing a 20 to 1, for example, on the 1, you're not getting 20 to 1 with that scratch. So 5 out of the 7 uh, came out of the f same race. 4 to 5 were within about a length and a half. So it's it's all about the trip. You, you might want to watch that replay a few times just to see what's, uh, what's going on there. Uh, let's go to the 5 as my top selection. Last year, I would have never even considered this mare. I didn't really like how she it was running. And then, then her first start out, uh, it seems like five turning five was the, was the big difference here. Um, a nice first race out, not really a factor. Next start. Against the boys. Against the boys, thank you. Yeah, and then the next, and I actually considered this horse in, in the tries and the supers and did run a nice race. Watch how this horse uh, started. Spotted the field a few lengths and then was wide throughout. If the race had been a little bit longer, I think she actually wins the race. So I'm hoping... Uh, a little bit of a better break, gets more distance, and, and, and can go from there. Uh, I do like this play horse. It, uh, it is 8-1. to one. Like I said, I'm calling it 4-1. to one. Then I'll go to the two. 
I backed this horse a couple times, and it was always chasing, misgiving, a lot of speed. And that always, uh, the horse is game enough, but uh, can it get the six? Maybe, or might even just get the lead. It's just a matter of, of what the, uh, if the seven presses too much. Oh, seven will be going right to the So back. there you go. So if that's the case, then this horse is going to have to kind of press, take over. And if that's, not the, if that's not possible, then the other closers. And then uh, the one horse is my third selection. I would say not as bad a trip as, as the five, but had uh, took a left turn in the stretch to find a, try to find a, uh, a win or a, a rail to get through. And uh, was special weight last time, which or last year when it started. So I think there's some back talent. It's hit, at Kurt's top selection. I'm using all three in the, the, pick, in the sequence bets. So I, I will go five, two, one. Yeah, with that uh, scratch, it changed everything for me. I still am going to number one Miami Souvenirs. This horse ran so much better than its first start. So I think this horse is kind of running into fitness. And if that is the case, third start off, the layoff is the charm. Never got beat by much, ran fifth, beaten a length and a half. And like Stretch said, was on the outside, darted to the rail, tried to get through. It was just too little, too late as it had a little bit of trouble inside the eighth hole with a smooth trip on the inside. I think Miami Souvenirs might be able to get to those tiring leaders. And one of those leaders is number seven, always the little one. This horse wasn't going to be in my top three if the six acts, the king was in there. But I just think always the little one just might be able to shake free on him today. And this horse has yet to go six furlongs has only gone five and a half, three times, and five-eighths once. But what it showed last time out was good staying power that it hadn't showed in its previous three races. Always showed speed, but always backed out of it. Seemed a little more rateable last time out. So if that is the case, always the little one, the fresh one into the condition, might just go to the front and keep on going. And I do like number two, Living Sky. This horse is sitting on a win. Going to be monstrously well bet in here. So that's why I'm taking a shot to get it beat. I think it's going to be in your top three, but I, I can't go all in on it, even though it's run two really good races back to back. So I'm just going to say it's going to round up my top three. I'm going to take one, seven, and two. Now we're going to carry on to race number six, a $7,500 claimer from Manitoba, Saskatchewan, North and South Dakota bred. Philly and Mayor Maidens are going to go six furlong stretch. That's a great race. It is. It, absolutely. So four of the six in this race have come out of the same same race. Two of them were quite in, quite a bit in front of them. I've taken the one that was in front of the other one by the most. It's one of those ones I kind of uh, angle I like in these maiden races. Um, as as uh, Kurt said, maybe third starts a charm. I'm hoping for third time is a charm getting out of the gate, which, <laughs> is, which is kind of borderline because there's your definition of insanity. But I think the outside post is really going to help this horse just instead of stuck on the rail. This horse gets out um, – just a little bit better is going to be tough. Made a nice outside uh, middle move after that right slow now. start. Yeah, and then kept. I liked how the horse kept battling to the end, trying to get to the winner. But after that break and the wide trip made it very tough. I, I do think that horse uh, could be tough to beat. I went to a bit of a price. You kind of have to read between the, kind of the internal fractions. I went to the six. You take a look that the middle fraction is 46 and four. For, for this horse, couple lengths back, call it 47 and one is what he went. The rest of the group struggles to go 48 seconds. I know they're different days, and so you can't be on it, but I just kind of know what the, the variants are. The one has gone 47 and two ish once at the best. So there's a chance that this one could get the lead and kind of keep going. And we know in these maiden races, somebody can get loose and just kind of keeps going because none of them are that quite of finishers. And so. That's my kind of sleeper. And then uh, if you need a show bet, take the four. He runs evenly, and that's what you get, 864. And an add-on to your six, ran against the boys the last two times. Now back against the girls. Milan, Ohio, I've seen the same thing as Stretch, a really nice move. Good staying power, golden going gorgeous. Just ended up being the best in, horse in there that day. But with this horse improving, I think today is the day. I also like number one, Anna Kozana. You have to watch replays. This is a horse that was stuck on the inside, came up, was fractious in the gate twice, went up, went down, and I think she ran a race there. I'm giving her another chance. That second last race, 
is definitely good enough to wire this field. So I'm liking Anacosana in the second position. And number four, Big Big Energy, back-to-back third-place finishes. Yeah, it looks like one of these horses that maybe don't want to go buy horses, but some of them have graduated. Sassy Storman, they weren't going to beat that horse. Going Gorgeous was just too good. And a lot of those other ones that Big Big Energy has run against had no shot of beating. I think the source does have a shot today if the speed does back up. So I'm going to give you 8, 1, and 4. Now we're going to carry on to race number 7, an allowance optional $15,000 claimer. Four three-year-olds and up. They're going to tackle the one-mile stretch. Wow, what a way to finish it off. Exactly. I completely agree with you. What a, It is a good way to finish off. So I, I went to the, the Invader coming uh, from Century Mile. Uh, it's, here's one of those. Don't worry that the horse uh, doesn't like the surface. Well, in fact, this horse loves the surface. That race, uh, the stake race last year in the Gold Cup, ran such a, a big race to my optic and uh, was just, just so solid. I think the horse is going to get that stocking trip. The trainer obviously brought the the two of them together. The 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 uh, likely favorite in the the golden boy. You always got to bring a friend. Uh, you got to bring a friend, and why not Just bring like this? Just like going to the races. <laughs> it you gotta is. Bring a you got to bring a friend. <laughs> That's so true. And and it's a, a great spot. Checking the conditions of a uh, full credit to the trainer to to find uh, the race that fits, and this one fits for this horse. Uh, I, I think that uh, the horse has been running well at Century Mile, and and is just sitting on another top effort. So you've got to use that one. Right. Should be a nice stocking trip. And then uh, we'll go to the fours, my second selection. A uh, big race last time, basically just uh, pulled away um, quite handily. Now the competition is a little bit uh, a little bit tougher, but I think the horse can do it. It's just a matter of how the how this horse is going to run. Doesn't have to have the lead and sit just off. So that's the horse. That's kind of for me the only other horse that could beat my top selection. And then I'll go to the six. Uh, that it was a smart ride. It wasn't a factor of winning, winning the race, but kind of the horse just a good ride by the jockey, sitting in the weeds, and then uh, basically made a late run. And if a lot of them just kind of battle it out, could pick up the pieces. So I will give you two, four, and six. Yeah, I see speed in here between the one house limit and the two Kinto Saw. I think those two get engaged early on and just soften up a little bit. But this Kinto Saw... It doesn't need the lead. It could be a stalker, overtake at any given time. But I think it just might get into a bit of a battle in there. And if that does happen, I think Explosive is going to be the stalker in here. The only loss came to Magic Tiger, who's undefeated here at the down. And look, absolutely amazing in both of those wins. It wasn't that Explosive lost that first race. Magic Tiger just ran so much better. That last race for Explosive was much better than the first one as the horse was raided off the pace and then exploded to the lead and easily won. So that's my second choice. And I went to number five, Go Start. This horse won't be in any contention early. I think he'll sit back, but showed good late run last time out. Run third beat in five and three quarters behind Mr. Dazzle and Brody Streak. You're not going to beat those two sprinting. At least Go Start isn't. But it seems like this horse is better going around two turns. And if it can pick up the pieces, I think it can run third. I'm going to give you a four, two, and five. Good luck with all your wagers this evening, and I'll be right back with the changes on this evening's Carter Racing. And if everybody can get their pens and programs ready, here are the changes on this evening's seven race car to racing. Turning your programs to race number one, there are no changes. 
Now turning your programs to race number two. Just a few overweights, and they're on your TV monitors. Turning your programs to race number three, our featured race on the card, the 47th running of the Golden Boy Stakes for three-year-olds. Number three, rough customer, correct the weight to 117 pounds. And just a few overweights, the jackpot pick five carryover over $206,000. Now turning your programs to race number four, kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering, scratch number six, great vision. That's in race four, scratch the six, great vision. Now turning your programs to race number five, our VIP fan of the night purse, scratch number six, ask the king. That's race number five, scratch the six, ask the king. Now turning your programs to race number six, the Orange Theory Fitness East St. Paul race. Kicking off the first of two classic high fives, there's just a few overweights. Now turning your programs to race number seven, other, our other classic high five race. Again, just a couple overweights. Another beautiful evening for racing here in Winnipeg. Currently under partly cloudy skies, we're pigeons. Stretch. We are pigeons. We're pigeons. Well, yeah. Um, I have no comment today. I, I got I, nothing. I don't have anything either. I, that's a big-headed pigeon, both of them. <laughs> yeah. All right, under partly cloudy skies and temperature, 24 degrees Celsius or 75 degrees Fahrenheit, a light wind out of the northeast at 16 kilometers an hour or 10 miles an hour, and the track is listed as fast, a fast racetrack for this evening's seven race car to racing. We're going to kick it off right here in race number one that goes to post in 17 minutes. Welcome to a set of boy nouns. Be sure to enter your name for a chance to be our VIP fan of the night. Ballots are available in the lobby. If your name is picked, you get the VIP treatment, including a $25 wagering voucher, an ASD t-shirt, a trip up to the press box to watch me call a race, go down to the paddock to see the horses, and then watch a race from the winner's circle and get a framed photo with the winning horse. Now on to racing. If you're new to racing, stop by and see Shannon and Brad at the Fan Education Center located on the main level. They can answer all your questions about how to bet. And be sure to download the new app 
called Dark Horse Bets. All new account signups receive a free $30 deposit and a free Dark Horse t-shirt. Scan the QR code on the front of the program cover or on any of the posters around the building to download the app now. Have a great evening of racing. Welcome down to the paddock for race number one. Time to kick off the week of racing with an allowance optional $10,000 claimer. Four three-year-olds and up. They're going to go seven furlongs. Stretch, uh, a good race and a pretty good favorite here. Six to five on Gray Admiral. Yeah, it's expected the horse will be the favorite, but I think all six with the right trip can actually win this race. But well, let's, let's start with the sixes as a... Both of our top selections of Julie can find uh, the six. There we go. Uh, good first out race. Uh, just went five and a half. And if you look at uh, the races at Century Mile last year, run, going the, the mile, mile and a half, or 16th, some really good races in there. And so I think that's the key. Second off the shelf. Uh, got used to the, the track because this was the first race uh, at ASD. And, and uh, I, I just think the, 
horse is going to be near the lead? Do you think the horse is going to go to the lead? Yes, I think it's going to show speed in here because it really isn't a lot. Perseability, I think, is the only other one. Yeah, and, and that's fair. And so I, I don't think there's going to be a fast pace. I, I, don't, I wouldn't see two and six battling it out. But if the six gets loose, uh, watch out. It'll be double tough, but he doesn't need the lead. Yeah, I also went to the six in here. Another horse I like, number one, Ethan's Animal. Gets a shadow roll on today. And a nice work coming in, in 48 and four. That first race, and Ethan's Animal ran against Hard West, Toil and Trouble. Fourth beat in five. That was a good close down the lane. Last time out, 12 horse field was 11th. Ended up getting beat by seven in the end. But we keep saying June 5th and June 6th. We had 14 races. 12 of them went wire to wire. So trying to win from post or of the 11th post position or the position of 11th, that was near impossible that day. So I think this horse is going to run way better and draws the rail. Very important. Yeah, and that, that's such a good point. 12 horse field, that was also the off track too. So, you know, getting the mud in the face and stuff. So, uh that's a fair value. I went to the two as my second selection because, as you mentioned, the horse that could be on the lead or a bit of pressure could be Percivility. I like that last race. Um, again, similar. was fifth beat and six. Yes, backed up a bit. But, again, both of their kind of the similar type. And, and if you look at last year's races to finish off the meet, the, the first and the second uh, going around the two turns was – were good races. The figures were there. Yes, the one was against Manitoba Breads, but some competitive ones for sure. Oh, yeah. McKeg ran third in the Gold Cup. Number three is Merlemac, and Merlemac ran fourth, beating four and a half for 5,000 non three. Big jump up here, but comes out of a key race where Drop a Caribou came back to win and also the second place finisher, North Fork. Why is this horse jumping up so much? Well, it was wavered in at the 5,000 coming from Woodbine. So they started there. They only had one waiver. So you kind of want to find where you're going to fit. If this horse would have went right back in for five on three, someone probably would have took it. So they're just trying to see where they are. But what they are is a route horse. At least it was at Woodbine in 2022. And this horse was always right there. This could be a bit of a surprise in here if the speed backs up. Yeah, yeah, really good point. Uh, clearly, this horse is a distance horse. We talked about this horse. I just thought this horse could have been third or fourth and almost a prep, and that's exactly what so you got the start. I'll go to my third selection. That's the five, boss factor. Um, we're going to see if the horse can handle the two turns. The figures are certainly there. This horse shouldn't be on the lead and, and try to pick up the pieces late. And then the last one, the... Number four, it's a boy. This is a horse that's predominantly running on the turf. 25 lifetime starts, 24 of them were on the turf. Not much to go on by the dirt. Has a couple good workouts in late May and early June. This horse has been off a year coming into this race. I don't think it's an easy spot for It's a Boy, but Bruce Anderson has started off the meet really well. Yet to get a win, but four for five in the money. Let's go to our wagers here in race number one stretch. Let's start it off with you. Yeah, I'm just going to start off with a small one, a $5 exacto wheel, two and six, maybe one of the speed horses, and then two, five, and six underneath. I don't need the box. That's $20. $20. You could do a $1 exacto wheel, and that'd be four bucks. And myself, I'm just going to go win on the six, 30 to win. Good luck with all your wagers here in race one, and we'll see you back for race two. are on the track for race number one. They're going to go seven furlongs for 16000 
Five hundred dollars. Number one is Ethan's Animal. Owned by Line Life Stable, trained by Ryan DeJarlis, with Stanley, Shady Jr. Number two is Persibility. Owned by Manny Miaderos and John Clement, trained by Jim Donnelly, with Arthur Badu. Number three is Merrill Mack. Owned by Tom Boyko, trained by Carl Anderson, with Tim Tarasenko. Number four, It's a Boy. Owned by Sanderson Stables, trained by Bruce Sanderson, with Sven Balru. Number five is The Boss Factor. Owned by Quinny Racing, trained by Tom Gardaby Jr., with Demario Bino. Rounding out the field is number six, Gray Admiral. Owned by Kirk Sutherland, trained by Rick Wise, with Antonio Whitehall. Post time for race number one, three minutes away. It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, the boys kicking off the, the week going seven furlongs. Yes, there is a big favorite. It's not a standout. It does look good. Four to five is a little bit low for me. Ran a good first race out there. I think this horse could be on or near the lead and keep going. Bigger say this horse is right there in the winner's circle. A couple other contenders that certainly could end up. Let's go to the two horse. Uh, four to one is a nice value. Could also go to the lead and get very game on the front end and just kind of keep going. If there is a battle between the two, maybe the five at uh, five to one. That's some value there too. So let's go six, two, and five. Yeah, Stretch, I'm with you on number six, Gray Admiral. Huge race last time out, chasing every step of the way, only to lose by three quarters of a length and gets the preferred distance today. I also like number one, Ethan's Animal. First time out, a good close, last time out. The track was speed favoring, wasn't able to get there. Good workout and, and also a shadow roll on, a little equipment change that could help. And number five, the boss factor. I think will be another one that'll be rallying late. So I'm giving you six, one and five. Good luck here in race one.
Ethan's Animal, the first to step up and in the starting eight. Persibility walks up and in. Merrillmack is next. It's a boy's turn. Just two left to load. The boss factor. And just waiting on Gray Admiral. A four to five favorite to the outside. The field is set. They're at the post. And they're off. Stumbling at the start was It's a Boy. From the inside, Persability. Showing some early speed and takes the lead by three quarters of a length. 
Merle Mack on the outside in second. Gray Admiral, two and a half lengths off and in third on the outside. On the inside of him, it's a boy. Another half length back to Ethan's Animal. And the boss factor will be the early trailer. A slow opening quarter in 25 and 2. Persibility nursed to that opening lead by a length and a half. Ethan's Animal. Taking advantage of the rail has now moved up to second in between horses. Muramak, three wide, gray admiral. Then it's back to It's a Boy. And the trailer boss factor, only five off the lead. The half sped up to 49 and two. And Persibility still with that lead by a length. Ethan's Animal looking for a seam on the inside. Gray admiral, three wide, ready to make a late run. Persibility, more in the tank, and starts to pull away. Persibility, nursed him to sleep early, and is gonna go gate to wire. Persibility takes it. Ethan's animal second best, Grey Admiral in third, fourth to the boss factor. The stewards will post to number two, Persibility, as the race winner. Second goes to number one, Ethan's Animal. Third to number six, Grey Admiral. And fourth to number five, The Boss Factor. They went the opening quarter 25 and two. The half 49 and two. Six furlongs, 114 and two. Time for the seven furlongs, 127 and two. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner here in race number one, that's number two, Persibility. Persibility is a big elding, seven years old, by Vengeful Wildcat, out of the mare Pillow Queen, by Photon Fur. Owned by Manny Miaderos and John Clement, trained by Jim Donnelly, and ridden to victory by Arthur Badu. Time for the seven furlongs, 127 and two. Number two, Persibility, was proudly bred right here in Manitoba by Dr. Betty Hughes. Race one is official in the upcoming second race. There are no changes. Kicking off another pick three here in race two.
Assiniboine Downs has introduced a new Chase the Ace weekly draw. The progressive jackpot is guaranteed at $5,000 if you pick the Ace of Diamonds. Tickets start at $5 and are available online at asdowns-cta.com or in person here at Guest Services or at the VLT Cashier's Cage located on the second level. The draw will be made this Thursday, so get your tickets now. Proceeds do support community charities, including Final Furlong, the Winners Foundation, Manitoba Indigenous Cultural Education Center, Indigenous Languages of Manitoba, and the Manitoba Lung Association. By purchasing a ticket, you are helping these charities make a positive difference in the community. Thank you for supporting the Chase the Ace Ticket Program.
welcome back down to the paddock for race number two. We have a $5,000 claimer for three-year-olds and up that are non-two-lifers. They're going to go seven and a half furlongs. Let's take a look back at race number one. Well stretched. Arthur Badu told him a story, a bedtime story in the first quarter, and uh, he fooled them all is what he did. <laughs> Put them to sleep. Is that he what did. You're, that's where you're going he with? Fooled them all. He did. It was it was a smart ride. Great got, ride. Got the lead and then didn't have to go any faster early. And then when they came up, did did ask a little bit and made a, a quicker middle quarter and kind of discouraged them. And then and I've we've watched Persibility over the years and he he is a game horse that uh, just keeps grinding and that's what happened. They're not going to outclose him going that slow. Take note of the your one horse. Ethan's Rhett, animal makes a a nice move on the rail to try and press on the backside, right? And then out closes the, then drops back and comes again, kind of a Z pattern to a point there. And so something you you want to make note of of how good that horse ran. Um, but as you know, that's why you look for speed and, and kind of work backwards, or that's what I like to do. Yeah, so. so do I. Okay, on to race number two. Stretch. Who do you like? Hey, we'll go with. Uh, the, the one is my top selection. I am a little surprised with all the early money on this, but I guess everybody saw the same thing I did. Uh, kind of same pattern as last year. Likes going the distance. And uh, the first race ran a really nice prep over the track and, and was actually closing a little bit. I think this time, this horse will not go to the lead. So if somebody gets loose, the horse is up against it a little bit. That's one thing you've got to kind of always be careful with if there's lone speed, which could be your selection. But I just think this horse is a top effort. If there is a pace battle, he can win it. Yeah, and Frank's reload had won two in a row. The other horse I'm going to is number six, my boy Christian. Ran a good race at the five non two against Drop a Caribou, is now blown through the conditions, winning three in a row, then jumped up to the 10,000 non two. Papa Oscar Whiskey, Whiskey had run second in the 10 non 3, dropped into that 10 non 2, and won rather easily in the end by five and a half. But my boy Christian got to stretch out to the six furlongs. This is a horse that was always running route, route-ish races, mile 16th, but had some seven furlong races in there. There isn't a pile of speed in here, so if my boy Christian and Ronaldo Cumberbatch head to the front end and slow it down like Arthur Badu did, this could be the horse to go gate to wire. Agree with you. Uh, let's go to the horse that I thought was going to be the favorite. We both have the horse in our top three. Uh, you were a little uh, more worrisome, so you put it third. Yeah. That's the two. Uh, horse has a very good work coming in. It does worry me. Worry me. There's there is some money in the in the uh, wind pool, and the horse is four to one. Is a little cool in the in the daily double payouts. That's worried. I guess everybody kind of has the same worry as I do. And uh, but if runs back to some of those races uh, that at ASD when was competitive running uh, for the graduation last year as a two year old, those would be easily good enough to win. But the horse is dropping so clearly, um, probably not at that level from last year. Yeah, another horse to take a look at, number three, White Rose Spirit. Has yet to do much in the first two outings. Uh, sat sixth, ended up seventh, sat sixth, ended up eighth. But did have trouble in the last start. The one thing White Rose Spirit does have going for, look at those races last year at Century Mile. Broke the maiden going a mile. Showed speed in the non two lifer both times, only to get caught late. If my boy Christian doesn't go to the front and White Rose Spirit does, of course, could run a long way. And if you get 20 to 1, it just might be worth putting a couple dollars on. For sure. That's, the, that's this type of condition. Somebody uh, gets the right trip. Uh, speaking of a, a sleeper that could go to the lead, maybe it's, it's the four showing speed at Tampa. Um, and then the first two starts didn't really get out, especially the last time. And that basically is a, a throwout race. And it was a much higher level, actually dropping two conditions. That was a 12 9 3, which doesn't even belong because this is a non two. So you toss that out, you look at the Tampa races and say, oh, maybe. Yeah, another horse to look at, number five, Carolina Gent. This horse, first time out, ran fourth, was beaten by my boy Christian. And then the last time was handily beat by Runaway Hurricane. 
This horse will have to show a little bit more, but it did break the maiden going around two turns. Yeah, and then the other closer is the, the seven. Ran, ran in the same race as the one. Did lose by a, 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 a length and a half, but uh, certainly can make the close. Ran some uh, evenly races at uh, Will Rogers going a mile. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number two. Stretch started off. Okay, I, I closers always worry me a little bit, but I got one. I'm just going to go 30 place on the one. And myself, I'm going after a pick three. I'm taking one and six in here, then the two and six. Round it off with the three, four, and five. That's a $2 ticket for 24, a $1, only 12 bucks. Good luck with all your wagers here in race two, and we'll see you back for our feature race, the 47th running of the Golden Boy Stakes. are on the track for race number two they're gonna go seven and a half furlongs for ten thousand one hundred dollars number one is runaway hurricane owned by high road stable trained by tiffany husbands with chavi and chow number two is arrogance owned by b and j stable and shelly brown trained by shelly brown with Antonio Whitehall. Number three is White Rose Spirit, owned and trained by Shelley Brown with Demario Bino. Number four is Done Right, owned by Sean Morin and John Clement, trained by Sean Morin with Nyron Austin. Number five is Carolina Gent, owned by Wind Dancer Stable, trained by Wendy Anderson. With Neville Stevenson. Number six is My Boy Christian, owned by Devin Gittens and Gregoire Mavales, trained by Devin Gittens with Ronaldo Cumberbatch. Rounding out the field is number seven, Great Realization, owned and trained by Jerry Gorno with Praven Badre. Post time for race number two, two minutes away. And in this the second race, we have our HBPA Manitoba best turned out horse. That is number one, Runaway Hurricane. Number one, Runaway Hurricane, the HBPA Manitoba best turned out horse. Now, two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, here we go.
go. Six boys, one girl going seven and a half furlongs for horses that have only won one race lifetime. I'm going to start with the horse on the rail. Didn't think this horse would be this low a price. Won't be on the lead. We'll be sitting in about oh, fourth or fifth along the rail. Try to make a late run. If the speed uh, backs up, the horse can be there. Who's potentially the speed? Well, potentially the six. That horse would try to go gate to wire. Others to look at is the big dropper in the field that has some back class. That's the two at the three, uh, at three to one. So let's go one, two, six. Kurt? Yeah, Stretch, I like number six, my boy Christian. Don't see a lot of speed in here. But this horse doesn't have to have the lead. Ran a good second first time out against the multiple winner drop at Caribou. Has won three in a row. Last time out, battled on the front end. The horse likes going a rut of ground, as it did show last year in Fort Erie and Woodbine. I also do like Runaway Hurricane. This horse loves distance, gets it today, and arrogance the dropper. Gonna take that one for third. Six, one, and two. Good luck here in race two. Runaway Hurricane, the current 8 5 favorite, the first one in. Arrogance is in. Next up, White Rose Spirit. She's now in. Dunright's turn. First will be Carolina Gent. 
He'll go in. My boy Christian walking up. Just two left to load. On the outside, great realization. Now just waiting on done right. My boy Christian fractious in the starting eight. They're all set, they're at the post. Done right a bit, fractious. They're all set once again. They're at the post, and they're off. From the inside, arrogance away well, but White Rose Spirit going to want the lead and is going to get it done right. On the outside in second, arrogance hugging the rail in third, in between horses, Carolina Gent. On the far outside, my boy Christian. And then it's going to be great realization and runaway hurricane. Those two are the early trailers. Battling on the front end, White Rose Spirit and Dunright. They're nose and nose. Settled back in behind a length off it, my boy Christian. On the rail, arrogance. Looks to have a mid-full in-between horses. Carolina Gent, now runaway Hurricane. Starting to show some run four wide. And the trailer still great realization. On the inside, it's White Rose Spirit. Now getting a second challenge from my boy Christian. Runaway Hurricane, four wide. Getting ready to engage those. Arrogance right in behind and great realization. They hit the head of the lane. Runaway Hurricane with the best stride now opens up by two. Fighting back White Rose Spirit. Also my boy Christian, but this is all Runaway Hurricane. Running away on the field and is going to win by five. Great realization and arrogance. Battle for second and third. Fourth. We'll go to White Rose Spirit. The Stewart's supposed to number one runaway hurricane as your rate race winner. Second goes to number seven, great realization. Third to number two, arrogance, and fourth to number three, white rose spirit.
Now entering the winner's enclosure. The unofficial winner here in race number two, that's number one, Runaway Hurricane. Runaway Hurricane is a chestnut gelding, five years old, by Rattlesnake Bridge, out of the Mayor Field House, by Limehouse. Owned by High Road Stable, trained by Tiffany Husbands, and ridden to victory by Chavi and Chow. Race two is official in the upcoming third race. Our featured race on the card is the 47th running of the Golden Boy Stakes for three-year-olds. Kicking off jackpot pick five wagering. Number three rough customer. Correct the weight to 117 pounds. We'll give you the rest of the changes in this evening's jackpot pick five. Turning your programs race number four. Scratch number six, Great Vision. Number seven, Freud's Vision, will race with a tongue tie on. Turning your program to race number five, Scratch number six, Ask the King. Now turning your program to race number six, number three, No No Midnight, will not run on Lasix. And there's no changes in race number seven. Jackpot pick five wagering. Kicking off with the 47th running of the Golden Boy Stakes. They'll go to post in 16 minutes. Are you new to Assiniboi Downs? Then check out the 140 VLTs located on the climate controlled second level. They're open all day, every day from 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. This is also the first leg of the 20 cent wager called the jackpot pick five coming up here in race number three. If your ticket is the only correct one, picking the winners of races three to seven, you're gonna win the whole jackpot, which is more than $200,000 and when there is more than one winner, a consolation is paid out and the jackpot keeps growing.
And welcome back down the paddock for race number three, our featured race, the 47th running of the Golden Boy Stakes for three-year-olds. They're going to go six furlongs. Number three, rough customer. Correct the weight to 117 pounds. Let's take a look back at race number two. Well, race one, wire to wire. Race two, runaway hurricane sat second last, but there was a pressured pace and uh, ran by him easy. Uh, cor correct. And so I watched the races outside every time, and I saw the one at the back, and the horse had so much horse. Chow just had to get him to the outside, and he, he could just see it. They were going fast early. This horse had a mitful and, and just uh, can, can win right back. I think this horse is a little bit better from than last year based on the first two starts. Yeah, no doubt about it. That first time sprinting, this horse is not a sprinter, got the preferred distance, got the win. I see it moving forward through the conditions. All right, on to the Golden Boy Stakes. This should be a thriller stretch. Who do you like? Absolutely. So we landed on the same horse uh, because we both ran the race and we think there's a battle up front. Uh, we both went to the six. Uh, I like this horse. The so first start over uh, over our track is, is uh, it was so much the best, it basically just uh, pulled his way to the lead and took over. The next start, Chicago's Gray was just too much speed. They were only going five furlongs. It was not beating Chicago's Gray on that day. This horse is going to get that uh, stalking trip. You look at the Golden Gate races, uh, especially the two, uh, the one for the claiming 12-5. That's an impressive race. As it says in the lines, four wide close fast. I think the same kind of thing sets up for this horse with, with there's enough speed in here. That it does the, the speed I think is going to come back going six for long. Yeah, I agree with you. Chicago's Grays, my second selection, and this horse won so easy breaking the maiden. Came back in the primetime TV and did the exact same thing. Easily went wire to wire. The stick is yet to hit this horse, but I watched that Oaklawn Park race for maiden twelve five where the horse was up easily. Then the jock pulled up the whip and gave it a couple of swats. And that didn't work out well as the horse ended up stopping to lose by a length and a half in the end. Chicago Gray has not been headed yet this year, but Cuban Cobra loves the front end, has already won here, and Blazing Bow also is bringing some good speed and even the main rough customer. So there's no lack of speed in this race. So we're going to see what Chicago's Gray is made of. Absolutely. And you made a good point that. Uh... Cobra has won, uh, won here, so that's a good sign. We'll make a couple comments. If you're wondering about the comparison on which track is faster, so Century Miles, 10,000 Claimer is your comparison. They do, they do six furlongs in 109.53. Our track, 10,000, which is how you compare, is 111.92. Turf Paradise is 109.04. So if you're basically comparing times from track to track, you can't. You're almost two and a half seconds faster at Century Mile. And so be careful with that. Uh, that That's some great homework stretch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, I'm proud of you there. Thanks, thanks, Kurt. Yeah, I did some work for us. Okay, what about Cuban? <laughs> and anyway, this horse looked, uh, looked spectacular. First start, um, got the lead quite easily and just kind of kept going. Uh, went fast and, and finished up fine. So it's just a matter of, is going to get some pressure. Didn't get as much last time. I, I didn't know the other horses well enough to say if there was enough other speed, but the horse is uh, four, six, uh, six for six first or second and has the lead uh, five of six times. So you, you, this is one of those horses that's going to go as fast to get to the lead usually. Yeah, no doubt about it. And this horse definitely has good staying power. Another horse to look at, number one, Blazing Bow. Blazing Bow last year couldn't get out of the starting gate but that's been rectified this year. Now that the horse is a three-year-old, hit the front end and made real quick work of that field of maidens. I know they always had good promise for Blazing Bow. Draws the rail, has a freshening 5 8 workout in 105-1. and one. Wouldn't surprise me if this horse runs a big race, but I just don't think can win it today. Yeah, and, and let's Not go, with the style. That's fair. That's fair. Let, let's go to the three. It's a maiden. I don't like betting maidens in stake uh, races. But I will say a couple things that this horse has come off first lifetime start only going five furlongs, closed, and and then the last time uh, pressed. I don't think she's going to be able to go. I, it, 
It'd be tough. Yeah, tough to go head to head with these. Correct, but adds Lasix for the first time. So we've seen what a uh, few of the horses, how much they've improved with that. For sure. Another horse to look at, number four, Adjournment. Has run a couple okay races, but was easily beaten by the six Saxon Saga in two occasions. And Chicago's Gray last time out and beaten by Cuba Cobra last year. Adjournment will have to run a lot better to hit the top three. Yep. Yeah. And then the last one, it's the longest shot on the board. Going to have to probably change his running style. Uh, Bumped at the break a little bit and then kind of ran evenly. Nice first race over the track. Just a matter of, uh, it hasn't seen passing horses, but maybe that first start can change it a little bit. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race number three. Jackpot pick five time. That pool growing. It's going to be over a quarter million dollar stretch. What do you have? Okay, just a small pick five. I, I don't know where you found $48, but whatever. The wife's uh, purse. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, 20 cent pick <laughs> five, two, six, seven. With one two five, with one two five, with four six, with one four six eight, king the two in the last. If you've got uh, Kurt's money, you could double it and add his four. And I've got to make my place bet. This has been working all, all season. Forty place on six on the closer. And myself, I'm going to take two and six in here. One two three four five in the next. One two four seven. One two one four and eight in race six. Round it off with two and four. 48 bucks. Good luck with all your wagers here in race three. See you back for race four. Kick it off $50,000 guaranteed. Pick four wagering. Cineboy Downs is proud to present our featured race here in race number three. It's the 47th running of the Golden Boy States for three-year-olds. They're going to go six furlongs for $50,000. Number one is Blazing Bow, owned by 82 Thoroughbreds, trained by Michael Nault with Chavi and Chow. Number two is Cuban Cobra, owned by Crystal Cates and Gonzalo Anderson, trained by Gonzalo Anderson with Dane Nelson. Number three is Rough Customer, owned by Ray Blasetti, trained by Rod Heggie with Andre Martin. Number four is Adjournment, owned by Arneson Farms, trained by Lise Pruett with Antonio Whitehall. Number five is Properly Connected, owned by Henry Witt Jr., trained by Jerry Gorno with Neville Stevenson. Number six is Saxon Saga, owned by Bill Meikle and Windancer Stable, trained by Wendy Anderson with Ronaldo Cumberbatch. Rounding out our featured field is number seven, Chicago's Gray, owned by Roll the Dice Stable, Royce Finley, and Arneson Farms, Trained by Murray Duncan with Jorge Carreño. The 47th running of the Golden Boy States kicking off jackpot pick five wagering. They'll go to post in two minutes.
now two minutes to post time at ASD. Some of the top three-year-olds in a stake race going six furlongs. Great race to watch. I'm going to start with a bit of a price horse. Uh, the six horse at nine to two won't be on the lead. Should be sitting in about uh, fourth or fifth and then try to make a late ru uh, run late, kind of like the second race. Others to consider the speed of the speed, which is the favorite. That's the two coming from Century Mile. Does Always gets the lead. It's just a matter of can keep going. The seven horse is our speed horse. It uh, is the local horse that... Hasn't lost here, big victories. So I'm gonna go six, two, and seven. Kurt. Yeah, Stretch, I'm with you at number six, Saxon Saga. I think it's gonna be the perfect stalker in here. The speed is a one, two, three, and seven. So we should get an absolute dream trip. I do like two and seven underneath. Both of them should be banging it out. The two Cuban Cobra hasn't been worse than second in its life. The seven, an absolute speed ball. The six furlongs is the question. Six, seven, and two. Good luck here in race three. Blazing Bow will lead the three year olds into the starting gate. Cuban Cobra, the Alberta Invader, moves in. The other Invader from Alberta, Rough Customer, is in. Adjournment from the middle. Locks up and in. Properly connected is next. Just two left to load. 
Saxon Saga. And just waiting on Chicago's Gray to the outside. Blazing blow, bow a little fractious. They're at the post. And they're off in the Golden Boy Stakes. Jumping at the start was Blazing Bow. To the far outside, Chicago's Gray was out well, Cuban Cobra. Not trying to match it on the inside, a German. Settled back in third, Saxon Saga, fourth on the outside, properly connected in fifth. A gap of three more back to Rough Customer. After the poor beginning, Blazing Bow is the early trailer. The opening quarter, 23 seconds, and Chicago's Gray has the lead by two. Saxon Saga and Cuban Cobra. Those two battling it out, trying to gain ground through a quick half in 45 and 2. They hit the head of the lane, and Chicago's Gray now opens up on the field and is cruising up by four with a 16th of a mile to go. This is all Chicago Gray. Going to win the Golden Boy, Saxon Sega in second, Cuban Cobra in third and fourth. Goes to rough customer. The Stewart's opposed to number seven, Chicago's Gray, as your race winner. Second goes to number six, Saxon Saga. Third to number two, Cuban Cobra. And fourth to number three, Rough Customer. They went the opening quarter, 23 seconds. The half, 45 and two. Five eights, 57 and three. Time for the six furlongs, a quick one, 10 and two. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner, an impressive one, of the 47th running of the Golden Boy Stakes. That's number seven, Chicago's Gray. Chicago's Gray is a gray own gelding, three years old by Tapret, under the mayor Dolce Arabi by Spies Town. Owned by Roll the Dice Stable, Royce Finley, and Arneson Farms. Trained by Murray Duncan. And ridden to victory by Jorge Carreño. Time for the six furlongs. One, ten, and two. Assiniboy Downs is very pleased to have on hand our chief executive officer, Darren Dunn, to make a, pro to make a trophy presentation to the winning connections. Race three is official in the upcoming fourth race. Kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering. Scratch number six, Great Vision.
Number seven, Freud's vision. An equipment change, tongue tie on. We will carry on with the rest of the changes in this evening's pick four. Turning your program to race number five, scratch number six, Ask the King. Turning your programs to race number six, number three, No No Midnight will not run on lace six. And there's no changes in race seven. $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering starts right here in race number four. And we've drawn our VIP fan of the night. Congratulations goes out to Emma Lupke. Emma Lupke, congratulations. You're our VIP fan of the night. Please report to guest services on the main floor, South End. Well, besides the excitement of racing and chasing the ace, big events will be staged at the Downs this summer, including the Canada Day Fireworks and Festival. That's this Saturday, featuring food trucks, artisans, vendors, kids' activities, live music, and a spectacular fireworks display by Campfire Pyrotechnics. Tickets are just $10. Five and under free, go to asdowns.com for more information.
And welcome back to Allen Paddock for race number four, kicking off $50,000 guaranteed pick four wagering with the $5,000 claimer for three year olds and up that are non two lifers are only going to go five furlongs. Scratch number six, Great Vision. Number seven, Freud's Vision. Will run with a tongue tie on. Wow, stretch, Chicago's gray. Everybody tried to have speed, but man, this horse just has ungodly fast speed. It, it does. We saw it at Oakland, and, and then the last two is just so much the best. The impressive part, I thought, was when the horse rebroke at about the eighth pole. Carino gave a great ride, got out there, did get to relax the horse a little bit, and then kind of let the Saxon come to him and then just let him go again, and, and it was another gear. So if they've, uh, well, that that's... Uh, Murray, uh, Murray Duncan, Murray Duncan uh, winning another stake race. So we'll see it. I would think they're going to try the horse to the, the Derby trial would be up next in a couple weeks. Oh, yeah. You might as well go there, see what you got, because nobody's going to touch you on the oh, front fun. end. And it, it'll be able to slow it down. One ten and two. Yes. Wow. That that was a killer time. OK, on to race number four stretch. Who do you like? Hey, kicking off the pick four. We like a bunch of them in We here. do like a bunch of them. It's a good sequence. Uh, last week, the, the, the pick four and the Wednesday didn't pay much because it, it did look pretty straightforward, and the, a lot of chalk was winning. I think the sequence is not as easy as it looks. I, think I agree. So it uh, pay pretty well. Let's start with my top selection, getting six to one. I'm searching in here. You'll see my pick four that I've got five horses in here. Um, and the angle here is the horse did show speed last time. I think that uh, it could show speed, but I'd rather if it just kind of sits off. A couple of those races was in the allowance field, and now there was too much speed in there, but still tried to close and pass horses. I think something similar to that uh, could be in the works. Nine to two right now. You get uh, Chady back. He's ridden this horse uh, five times, so I'm not worried about uh, a new jockey. If anything, he might know the horse uh, that much better. And when they closed, and he's won with this horse. That's a few reasons why I like the horse. Yeah, definitely it should move forward off of that first start. Another horse I like, number four, get up early. I like the morning line of six to one, but taking all the money right now at six to five. I see speed coming from the one, two, and three, and get up early. Doesn't have that kind of speed. I like when it sits just in behind and tries to take over. That last race was a great one against Jersey Shadow, who did have the lead. And it battled every step of the way to the wire. Now, if the race sets up with three speed horses, him sitting behind, which it uh, kind of looks like as Jambi doesn't have a lot of speed and Freud's vision doesn't have a ton. So I think get up early just might get an absolute perfect trip, but I'm not liking the odds. No, you, you, made, you made a good point. To, it just has to kind of sit off because it's not going to be able to keep up early. But that's, like you said, a good thing. I went to the five. We both have the five on the ticket, which is, it's just sitting at 10 to 1. I kind of thought that would be the case. Is a seven-month layoff. Uh, that would be the little bit of the concern where the others kind of have a little bit of step up. Three out of five in the money is one of the true closers in the race. Those I like the Louisiana down races uh, closing and, and uh, it was a little bit longer. But if the pace backs up, this horse certainly can be somewhere. At least you're getting a, a good return. I wouldn't play this horse under 10 to 1. Another horse to look at, number three, Mia's Majesty. This horse battled early and ended up succumbing to that battle. Third beaten eight, but was beaten by Drop at Caribou, who went on to win the non-three and non-four condition after that race. We've seen my boy Christian run earlier on in race number two, but that one did step up to seven and a half furlongs. Challenged, but uh, wasn't there in the end. Mia's Majesty, if this horse can be the speed of the speed and get away, it just might be able to take a gate to wire and you're going to get rewarded at four to one. For sure. And, and my kind of horse that I thought uh, on my notes says need the lead, and that's the two horse. Uh, two back uh, when had to drop to the 10, just crush the field. If this horse can get pretty much on the, on the lead again, certainly could uh, go gate to wire. It's going to have to make sure it's got positioning. Uh, five to two, I thought this horse might be the favorite. Probably end up to be the favorite by post time. I'm using the horse. Uh, this is not a horse I'd bet to show. I would be kind of more uh, win or nothing on this one. And the seven is Freud's vision. They're adding a tongue tie on to get today. 
showed a little bit of speed in the first two, but really backed out of it. Maybe that tongue tie will help. Last year, the horse had 12 starts, one win, and three seconds and three thirds. So was seven for 12 in the money running at the B circuit, Lethbridge and Grand Prairie in Alberta. But this one also has speed as it showed there. But this is tougher speed when you go to the bigger race tracks. But uh, Bill Kinch did have a 50 to one shot run second the other day. Yeah, th this is one of those may get the right position. It's it's a wide open race. Uh, let's I, I want to show everybody my pick four. All right, let's go to our wagers here in race four. Of course, pick four time stretch. All right, this is where you're spending. Yeah, all your I money. spent. I went after this one because it is a tricky sequence, and and uh, there's uh, it's not. Uh, I didn't think a pick six could go or pick five could go as a one ticket. So one two three four five in here with the one two five with the one six eight with the two four a bunch of price horses the first uh, first three legs. So I do like my ticket today. And myself, I'm taking three four and five in here. With the one, two, four, and seven, taking the one, eight, and race six, and rounding it out with the two and four, that's a forty-eight dollar ticket. Good luck with all your wagers here in race four, and we'll see you back for race five. The horse are on the track for race number four. They're going to go five furlongs for $10,100. Number one is Livery Man, owned and trained by Ryan DeJarlis with Stanley Shady Jr. Number two is Pioneer Town, owned by Mike Powers, trained by Jerry Gorno with Praven Badry. Number three is Mia's Majesty, owned by Devin Gittens and Gregoire Mavales, trained by Devin Gittens with the Mario Bino. Number four is Get Up Early, owned by Two Points Ranch, trained by Blair Miller with Jorge Carreño. Number five is Jambi, owned by Henry Witt Jr., trained by Jerry Gorno with Siobhan Bell. Number six, Great Vision was scratched. Running out the field is number seven, Freud's Vision. Owned and trained by Bill Kinch with Neville Stevenson. Post time for race number four, three minutes away.
It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. Boys going only five furlongs, so speed can go even if there's a battle. I think that the horse at a nice price at five to one is the one. Should get a nice trip along the rail. The other speed battle is it tires a little bit, comes up the rail, and you get paid quite well. Another long shot that's a closer, won't be near the lead. That's the five at 12 to one. First start of the year, hopefully ready to go. But if it is, you will, you will get paid. And the favorite that if runs back to the race last time, could be or two back could be tough but let's go one five and two kurt yeah stretch i like number four get up early i thought we'd get a pretty smooth stalking trip in here as the one two and three have a lot of early speed i thought jorge Carreno would sit right behind and wait till the head of the lane and try and sneak up the inside i also like the three horse Mia's Majesty ran a big race last time out to a horse who came back to win two since in Drop a Caribou. You're getting rewarded at five to one. And to round it out, I also like Jambi. If the horse is ready to go, four, three, and five for me here in race four. Delivery man, the first to step in. Pioneer Town, the seven to five favorite is in. Next up, Mia's Majesty. Get up early now, walks up. And in, two left to load, Jambi. And just waiting on Freud's vision to the outside. They're all set. They're at the post. That's Pioneer Town, a little fractious. And they're off. Breaking slow was get up early. But it's Mia's Majesty now showing some early speed and pressed right out to the engine. Livery Man now moves up on the outside to engage Mia's Majesty. Settled back three lengths. That's going to be Freud's vision. And then Pioneer Town get up early, starting to get into it after the poor beginning. And the trailer is going to be Jambi. 
The opening quarter, 22 and 4. And it's Mia's Majesty still with the lead now by three quarters of a length. Pressuring from the outside, livery man. They hit the head of the lane. Mia's Majesty now just pouring it on is opening up five, six. As they're coming to the 16th pole, this is all Mia's Majesty. The battle is on for second as Jambi has a good late rally. Third is going to be Pioneer Town and fourth, Delivery Man. Stewart's opposed to number three, Mia's Majesty as your race winner. Second goes to number five, Jambi. Third to number two, Pioneer Town. And fourth to number one, Livery Man. They went the opening quarter, 22 and four. The half, 46 and two. Time for the five furlongs, 59 and four. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the official winner here in race number four, that's number three, Mia's Majesty. Mia's Majesty is a big elding, four years old, by Majestic Perfection, out of the Mare Primetta, by Song and a Prayer. Owned by Devin Gittens and Gregoire Mavales, trained by Devin Gittens, and ridden to victory by Demario Bino. Time for the five furlongs. 59 and 4. Race 4 is official in the upcoming fifth race. Our VIP Fan of the Night purse. Scratch number 6, Ask the King. Kicking off a late pick 3 here in race number 5. Just a reminder that if you're new to racing, to download the new Dark Horse Bets app. All new account signups receive a free $30 deposit into their account. The Dark Horse Bets app was designed for people new to horse racing, making wagering simple with smart picks predictions available 
for all races. Get your free $30 now by signing up for Dark Horse Bets. Just scan the QR code on the front of your program.
And welcome back down Paddock for race number five. We have a $5,000 claimer for Phillies and Mares, three olds and up that are non two lifers. They're going to go six furlongs. Let's take a look back at race number four. While well, Mia's Majesty, uh, the speed of the speed hit the front end, was challenged a little, but uh, just kept on going. Kept on going. Uh, the key with that one was you look at the three works after the last start, had that first start over at ASD, and then uh, we're coming from uh, Ontario, and then and dueled with Drop a Cup. Now, Caribou, who you th we've seen win three in a row, um, so yeah. And then the closer, late closer, was your, your the five Jambi. that we thought. Yeah, just just need a little bit longer and probably needed to be a little closer. but uh, And needed that start. For sure. Being off almost a year. All right, on to race number five. We do have a late scratch to report here in race number five. Scratch number seven, always the little one. That's race number five right here. The seven, always a little one, is a late scratch. Well, that really changes things, Stretch. Now we have the two speed horses, the six and the seven, both scratched out of here. Now, what do you think? Yeah, so so you've, I, I'd probably uh, adjust my pick. So we'll, we'll talk about my picks on the board, but uh, I, I've got to uh, slightly change it. But we'll, we'll start with uh, Jess for Charlotte as my, my top selection. Uh, this horse, uh, two good starts this year. She, uh, like I said on the ASD Live, I wasn't that impressed last year, but the first start was impressive, closing, only going five. And then the last start, watched the replay, uh, was near the back, and then made a wide finish throughout, circled the field, and was kept coming at the end. If this, if this horse had got out, she would have won the race. That was based on when I thought there'd be a little bit more speed. So I've no, it's going to, I'll leave it at the top picks, but be careful because my other other pick's going to move up. But you go ahead with your pick, uh, Kurt. Yeah, I think two, three, and four are still going to be showing some speed to ensure at least a decent pace on the front end. That's why I went to number one, Miami Souvenirs. First time out, the horse did not run a jump. But what I liked is the mass improvement in the second start only lost by a length and a half, gets an extra half of furlong to work with. And this horse was on the outside, dipped to the rail to try and get there. Plain and simply, the race was over. So Miami Souvenirs now has to hope that fingertip shows speed with Living Sky and Victoriaville. And if that is the case, Miami Souvenirs off that big last outing, I see this horse making a big charge late. Yeah, I completely agree. That's in my, my uh, pick uh, four. And in my top three picks, a must use. Let's talk about the two. This horse uh, simply is now upgraded a little bit for me. And last time, last two first two starts had to chase. Uh, Misgiving was a just a speed ball that uh, wasn't finishing strong. But this horse had to chase and take over and then hold off. They're now going six. So this, depending on what happens, it depends what the jockey decides wants to do. Go right to the lead or try the same tactics. If tries the same tactics. We'll have to hold off our uh, the one and the five. Yeah, another horse to look at, number three, Fingertip. That horse showed speed first time out with Demario Bino. Next time, sat in the mid-pack and uh, ended up getting beat by three and three quarters. Demario is back on for Devin Gittens. They just hooked up for the winner in the last race on Mia's Majesty. Now that the six and seven are scratched out of here, that opens up something for Fingertip, which is the front end which the horse, the lifetime win, was going wire to wire for maiden allowance last year. So you're getting eight to one on a horse that could shake free. That's fair, for sure. Let's talk about the four. Same kind of thing. Stock last time. Remember, five of the seven were, were running in the same race. Uh, sorry, uh, four of four. No, five, five, of the, five of the horses all ran against each other and were relatively close. This one stocked on the outside and, and got tired. But I think with maybe a little bit less speed, this, this horse could keep going a little bit longer. Maybe rates and kind of takes over. You got a jockey change. Uh, Chavian Chow has won on this horse. And, and some, some jockeys just really know the horse and how they can run. So that might be, you know, that trainer or the horse jockey combo that might work for, the, for an upset. No doubt about it. And number eight, Sky Tizzy's the one taking the huge drop. 
Ran against Miss Z in the last, in the first level allowance. Misses the 10,000, goes right down to five. That was multiple winners. This is non-two lifers. The previous start wasn't a stake. And that first race of the year, that allowance non-two lifer against the boys, that race is definitely good enough to win this one. So it's turned into quite the wide open affair stretch. What do you have? We got a, let's go to our wagers in here. Yeah, so so just a, a a quick combination to mention. If you have the seven in the, the pick four or pick five, you're going to get the favorite. We're not going to know who that is, but we'll let you know uh, after the race when the wagering's all in. Just a simple $3 exacta box, one, two, and five. And myself, I'm going a $2 exacta wheel, one with all, and then all with one. Good luck with all your wagers here in race five, and we'll see you back for race six. Horse on the track for race number five, our VIP fan of the night purse. They're gonna go six furlongs for ten thousand one hundred dollars. Number one is Miami Souvenirs, owned by Staff Max Stable, trained by Curtis Maxwell with Ronaldo Cumberbatch. Number two is Living Sky. Owned by Don Gallant, trained by Carl Anderson with Sven Balru. Number three is Fingertip, owned by Pink Cloud Racing, trained by Devin Gittens with Demario Bino. Number four is Victoriaville, owned by Keno Martin, trained by Stephen Gaskin with Chavi and Chow. Number five is Just for Charlotte. Owned by Vela K. Butler, trained by Jennifer Jordan with Nyron Austin. Number six, Ask the King, and number seven, Always the Little One, were scratched. Rounding out the field is number eight, Sky Tizzy. Owned by Mike Powers, trained by Jerry Gorno with Neville Stevenson. Our VIP Fan of the Night purse here in race number five. They go to post in three minutes.
now two minutes to post time at ASD. going six furlongs uh, for horses that have not won two races lifetime you've basically got three co-favorites the two five and eight let's start at the five i didn't i thought this horse would be a bigger long shot she's going to be at the back of the pack and try to close late if there's a battle up front she's got a shot watch for her she's just got to get out of the gate a little bit better now take note the six and seven are scratched better re-handicap it that puts the two moves it up for me she could be the controlling speed right there so you can't leave her out and the closer at 11 to 1 that's the one kurt five two and one yeah stretch i like number one miami souvenirs huge race last time out third start off the layoff is supposedly the charm so i'm looking for miami souvenirs to try and mow them down late I also like number two, Living Sky, one of the horses that should show a little bit of early speed in here, has been knocking on the door for a win and could get it today. And number three, Fingertip, now with all the other speed out, that can make this one a lot more live to try and go all the way. So I'm gonna give you one, two, and three. Good luck here in race five. Miami Souvenirs, the first one into the starting gate. Living Sky, the co-favorite at two to one. Now moves in. Fingertip walks up and in. Victoriaville is next. Just two left to load. Just for Charlotte. Now waiting on the other co-favorite at two to one. That's Sky Tizzy. The field is set. They're at the post. And they're off. 
fingertip pointed out to try and grab the early lead. But Sky Tizzy on the outside has the same idea. And these two are going to do early battle. Settled back in third. That's Living Sky with Victoriaville on her outside. Just for Charlotte. A length and a half back. And the early trailer, Miami Souvenirs, about 10 off the lead. The opening quarter, 23 and 2. On the inside, fingertip on the outside, Sky Tizzy. Settled back in third, Living Sky with Victoriaville. Checking sharply was just for Charlotte. And Miami Souvenir is starting to show late run the half. 47 seconds. They hit the head of the lane. It's fingertip and Sky Tizzy. These two are up by about three on the far outside, trying to make up ground. Miami Souvenirs with Just for Charlotte, but Sky Tizzy, she is gonna take it. She's gonna win by two. Second's gonna be Just for Charlotte, third Miami Souvenirs, and fourth went to fingertip. The Stewart's supposed to number eight, Sky Tizzy, as your race winner. Second goes to number five, Just for Charlotte. Third to number one, Miami Souvenirs. And fourth to number three, Fingertip. They went the opening quarter, 23 and two. The half, 47 seconds. Five furlongs, a minute and three fifths. Time for the six furlongs, 1.15. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner here in race five, our VIP fan of the night purse. That's number eight, Sky Tizzy. Sky Tizzy is a Bay Philly, three years old by Sky Flight. Under the mare winning turn by Tiz Now. Owned by Mike Powers, trained by Jerry Gorno, and ridden to victory by Neville Stevenson. Time for the six furlongs, 115.
Race five is official. Ladies and gentlemen, please take note that in your pick threes, pick fours, and pick fives, if you had number seven, always the little one, Sky Tizzy helped you out. As you did get Sky Tizzy, who ended up being the favorite at post time. In the upcoming... Ladies and gentlemen, I have a correction to report. In race number five, both number two, Living Sky, and number eight, Sky Tizzy, were co-favorites in the race at two to one. But what happens, it goes down to exact dollar amount as to who had the more dollars on it. And unfortunately, I was incorrect that it wasn't Sky Tizzy that ended up being the favorite. It was number two, Living Sky. Coming up in race number six, number three, No No Midnight will not run on Lasex. The Orange Theory Fitness East St. Paul race here in race number six, kicking off classic high five wagering here in race number six.
And welcome back down the paddock for race number six for a $7,500 claimer for Manitoba, Saskatchewan, North and South Dakota bred maidens, fillies and mares. They're going to go six furlongs. Number three, No No Midnight will not run on Lasix. Let's take a look back at race number five. Sky Tizzy battles it out and lasts for the win. I was incorrect in saying that Sky Tizzy was the favorite. It goes down to dollar amount, and just to tell you what it was, Sky Tizzy had $8,110 on it. Living Sky, $8,530 in the end. So unfortunately, if you had always a little one, you got the two Living Sky, kind of like me and my pick for, so I'm out. Yes. Um... I, I I'll be I don't feel that badly uh, if you're watching the race and and uh, I've already got stable notes on on the five which I think was wow pro- was, tons of trouble at the three eight yes was probably the winner of the race and so my top selection had a little bad racing luck but that's uh, unfortunate racing luck on a few accounts so we we'll just have to get this horse next time but I don't think I'm going to get uh, the odds because everybody's going to see it in the charts but. Uh, and you're going to tout it up pretty uh, no, heavily. Nope, not going to tell anybody. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, on to race number six. What do you like in here, Stretch? Okay, here we go. Let's keep moving. There's still lots of chances to, to cash some tickets. Uh, let's go to the eight, top, top selection. Uh, this is a, a kind of another troubled trip horse uh, from the replays I've been watching. This horse broke has broke it slow. It was on the inside, and sometimes it's just not the place to be. And so especially a, a younger the horse is four, but it's only had two starts. So still learning to run. I think if this horse breaks a little bit better and, and uh, saves that middle move, certainly can win. The impressive part was why it was wide throughout, kept making a run and kept trying to get the leader. And just because it had to be used early, just kind of ran out of gas. But you wouldn't know that by the horse continuing to try. Was one and a half lengths better than uh, big, big energy who was then uh, four ahead of the field, rest of the field. So eight is for sure my top pick. Yeah, it definitely is mine too. And Mike Taphorn having a fabulous start to the meet. I also like number one, Anna Kozana was the less than even money favorite last time out after running a really good race, running second to Sassy Storman, who did go wire to wire. Anna Kozana had trouble in the gate. She was fractious a couple of times and she ran like it, plain and simple. Showed a tiny bit of speed, but nothing like she's shown in her last couple starts. I'm expecting a much better effort today, and you're getting way better odds currently at seven to two. Yeah, that that's fair. It's a good note to, because that doesn't always show up uh, before in there. And and uh, I my long shot or price horse, which I expected to get about six to one, is the six. And the key to this one is it was running against the boys last time. Showed speed in both starts. Wasn't on the lead, but showed it early on. And the internal fractions are a little faster than the other one. So if this one can uh, get controlled, I think this horse can keep going. Kind of like what happened in the fifth race. It just kind of kept going. It's a fair racetrack today, but if you're ever the lone speed, it, it's uh, always tough to beat. So there's my price one. Yeah, let me talk about number two, no barbed wire, the first time starter in the field. Nonios, three wins, $450,000 in earnings. The mom, Miss Barb Wire, five wins, 25K in earnings. All of it sprinting. This one has four half siblings. One didn't start. Another, a seven time maiden. Another one, two wins, 25K. And the last one, four wins, 51K. Not a lot of them had early speed, they were just kind of deep closers but uh, is taking a tiny bit of money yeah. at 19-1. to 1. It's always tough at this time. First, there's, I seem to find that they win earlier in the meet when other horses haven't raced, but now you're starting to see everybody with a few starts, so you've got to be that much better. But, um, yeah, this, we see these bottom claimers, uh, maidens there. Let's go to the four. Is, uh, is both of our third place uh, choice. I'm, I'm happy with uh, Kurt's selection putting this horse because this, <laughs> this is where this horse belongs. Six starts, four thirds, runs evenly. I think the same kind of trip can happen. I guess if there's others dueling, uh, this horse could just inherit. It's it's a it's a good show bet uh, if it was Wednesday for you, Kurt. But uh, the horse is competitive. 
just not the type that I like to use to win. Yeah, another horse to look at, number five, Jackie's Thunder. Showed a little bit of early speed for a quarter mile, but they did go rather slow in 24-1. and one. Did get beat by seven and three quarters in the end by the eight horse and the four horse. But Jackie's Thunder seems to be getting a little better with each start, so I wouldn't totally discount this one. Yeah, and, and the, the three horse, they're, they're taking a chance to going with blinkers off and, and adding the Lasix. No, so, no Lasix, thing. No Lasix, thank you. I was just testing to see if you were paying attention. Of course. Yeah, blinkers Always off. So, so obviously the blinkers didn't work out that well, so take them off and see if it can improve. And the seven rye bread. Here's another one that showed speed. A little more than a lot in here. Was there for a half a mile and then ended up tiring in the end. This is horse is making its third start. But if nobody goes out today, going gorgeous, went to the front end. This horse might stick around for a little bit more. Michael Rowe got a very impressive win the other day. And 11-1 on the board in a wide open race. Let's go to our wagers here in race number six. Stretch, what do you got? All right, the first uh, tri wheel I'm going with, and it's going to be 6 8 with 6 8 with all. And then, and then 6 8, not the full wedge, just maybe a half wedge. Okay. With 1 4 with 6 8, saving some money because I, I think the 6 8 are best, but the 1 4 ends are $16 total, saving some extra money for later. And myself, I'm going a $10 exactor, 8 on top with the 1 4, and then on the, re- the reverse, only a $5 exactor. One four with eight. Good luck with all your wagers here in race six, and we'll see you back for race seven. on the track for race number six the orange theory fitness east st paul purse they're gonna go six furlongs for ten thousand dollars number one is anna cozana owned by larry Falloon, anderson livestock stable and shelly brown 
trained by Shelley Brown with Antonio Whitehall. Number two is No Barbed Wire, owned and trained by Marion Johnston with Stanley Shady Jr. Number three is No No Midnight, owned and trained by Donna Johnston with Siobhan Bell. The four is Big Big Energy, owned and trained by Devin Giddens with Ronaldo Cumberbatch. Number five is Jackie's Thunder, owned by Two Points Ranch, trained by Blair Miller with Jorge Carreño. Number six is All Terrain Jane, owned by Shelley Brown, Anderson Livestock Stable, and Jay Jackson, trained by Shelley Brown with Demario Bino. Number seven is Rye Bread, owned by Trent Height, trained by Michael Rowe with Dwight Lewis. Rounding out the field is number eight, Milan, Ohio, owned by Pat Murphy, trained by Mike Tamporn with Neville Stevenson. Post time for race number six in three minutes. Now, two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, the girls going six furlongs, all looking for their first lifetime win, their maidens. So let's start with the favorite, the, the eight horse really good last race had some trouble was second best beat most of the field i think a repeat effort a little better out of the gate will be tough to beat now let's find a price in here let's go to the six this horse uh showed some speed in both starts and just kind of got tired but i think it was a it was against the boys now it's against the girls might just be able to carry the speed a little bit longer and uh, an old reliable horse is the four so let's go eight six and four yeah, Stretch, I agree with you. I really like the way Milan, Ohio ran last time out. Improved greatly over the first start. And a sharp trainer who's won at 50%. So I'm putting that one on top. I like number one, Anna Kozana, who had trouble in the starting gate. And she just didn't run a race. I'm expecting her to run a lot better today. So that's why she's in second. And big, big energy. Back-to-back -back thirds. I'm eight, one, and four. Good luck here in race six.
time. Ano Kozana, the first to make her way into the starting gate. No barbed wire, the next to go in. No, no, Midnight's turn. Big, big energy will be next. Big, big energy getting a little help from the gate crew. Jackie's Thunder steps up and in. All terrain Jane. She's now in. Two left to load. Rye bread. And just waiting on Milan, Ohio, to the outside. The field is set. They're at the post. And they're off. In between horses, all-terrain Jane shows some good early speed with Milan, Ohio. Look her in the eye on the outside. Anna Kozana on the rail in third, two lengths back. In between horses, big, big energy. Jackie's Thunder, three wide. Then a gap of two and a half lengths back is going to be Rye Bread. Two more. And no, no midnight and no barbed wire. The early trailer. 23 seconds, the opening quarter. And it's all terrain Jane and Milan, Ohio. Opening up five on the field. Anna Kozana trying to reel him in from third. Big, big energy in fourth. Then it's Jackie's Thunder and Rye Bread. The half 46 and four. They hit the head of the lane. All terrain Jane still has the lead by a half a length on the outside. Milan, Ohio. Big, big energy trying to come up the rail. A 16th of a mile to go. All terrain Jane. Big, big energy, a late surge, but all-terrain Jane. Looks like she hung on. Big, big energy in second. Third's going to go to Anna Kazana and fourth to Milan, Ohio.
The Stewart's supposed to number six, All Terrain Jane. As your race winner, second goes to number four, Big Big Energy. Third to number one, Anna Kazana. Fourth to number eight, Milan, Ohio. And fifth to number seven, Rye Bread. They went the opening quarter, 23 seconds. A half, 46 and four. Five furlongs, a minute and two fifths. Time for the six furlongs, 115. Now entering the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner of the Orange Theory Fitness East St. Paul Purse. That's number six, All Terrain Jane. All Terrain Jane is a Bay Philly, three years old by Cinco Charlie, out of the Mayor Nyla's image. Why, yes, it's true. Owned by Shelly Brown, Anderson Livestock Stable, and Jay Jackson. Trained by Shelly Brown. And ridden a victory by Demario Bino. Time for the six furlongs, 115. Number six, All Terrain Jane was proudly bred right here in Manitoba by Risa Harris and Kelly Holiday. Also, number six, All Terrain Jane was a CTHS sales grad and upon this mating, mating breaking win, will receive a blanket presentation from the HBPA. Race six is official in the upcoming seventh race. Classic high five wagering. There are no changes. Post time for race number seven, 14 minutes away. Well, after the final race, be sure to head up to the clubhouse where our popular crazy hour kicks in. Beer, shots, and wine just $4.75, as well as 25% off all appetizers, plus 140 VLTs ready for action until 1 a.m.
Ladies and gentlemen, turning your programs back to race number six, we had a claim to report. Claim for $7,500 was number one, Anna Kozana, claimed by Henry Witt Jr., trainer Jerry Gorno. Welcome back down to the paddock for race number seven. We have an allowance optional $15,000 claimer for three year olds and up. They're going to tackle the one mile. Quick look back at race number six. Well, stretch all terrain Jane said she'd go out to the front end and there was no looking back for after a hard fought battle. It was a hard fought battle and the, the eight broke better and pressed and, and uh, tired for fourth. But uh, yeah, the key was that middle. I liked looking at those middle uh, fractions and that was kind of the key to that one. Plus the, all, all the others came out kind of at the same race. So sometimes if you didn't like that field that much, you gotta look elsewhere. Okay, on to race number seven. What a great way to end off the evening. Who do you like? Yeah, look at the, the odds board, really good. Uh, I'm going to the two as my top selection. Invader from Century Mile. Uh, won a uh, an allowance race uh, back uh, two weeks ago or nine days ago. Decides to come right back in. Was a stable mate uh, of the horse in the stake race, and I see he's checking out the crowd at the blinkers. You you'll be able to spot. Uh, yeah, him. that'll be an easy one. That's, That's quite that, fluorescent. <laughs> that is an easy one. Yeah, I think this horse. I, it could the horse could go to the lead, but I, I I'm hoping he runs the race like he did when he was here. Back in September at the Gold Cup, stalked and tried to make a run late. I, I think this horse is just sharp, and uh, with the right trip, uh, certainly can be right there. Yeah, another horse I like, number four, Explosive. Lost to Magic Tiger first time out, but Magic Tiger came into this condition and blew the doors off him, winning easily by five. Explosive's comeback race didn't go to the front end, stalked the leaders overtook them and easily drew off by three and three quarters. Explosive, I think this is going to be a really nice one. Going to win a lot of races this year, but it might start hitting the stakes where obviously it gets so much tougher, but this horse has showed that he definitely belongs and he'll be a tough player in here. Yeah, agree. agree. Absolutely. I thought it was between those two. The ones uh, trying to complete the try or, or the super, even the high five, congrats on that uh, nice payout in the last race on the high five of over 1,300. I went to the six, and the angle here is it was just a so smart ride last time, a bit of a battle up front, and then this horse just uh, eased into getting second. Wasn't going to beat Magic Tiger, but uh, nobody has this year. One of those stalking trips uh, tries to make a, a late run to pick up the pieces. Five to one is the current price. Yeah, I'm looking for a late run or two. That's number five, go start. Lost to Mr. Dazzle and Brody's streak going five and a half furlongs. And I think this horse, plain and simply, likes going farther. And uh, it gets it today. Jen Jordan, once her horses start running well, they seem to keep running well. And off that last one, maybe the blinkers were the key as they threw them back on, it looks like. And go start. Uh, I definitely like this horse if the speed backs up. Yeah, this almost was my third selection because I did like that last race. Let's look at the rail speed, the one going off at 9-1. to one. I was a sprinter, first two races sprinting, got into huge duels early, that expected. But now if you look at the last race in September, got the lead and, and uh, crushed the field. Said lone speed. It's not going to be the lone speed in here, but uh, this horse does get tough when he gets on the front end. Also take a look at number three, Monstradamus. A good race first time out. The Stay Happy, who went wire to wire. The speed stuck around for first, second, and third. 
comeback race, trying to beat the fractions and take it eight to wire, but unfortunately, Magic Tiger was in there, overtook and drew off. Monster Domus, I think, is better just off the pace, has a lot of wins in the stocking role. If Monster Domus can do that, you're going to get rewarded at 11 to 1. Yeah, and speaking of the, the, the backers on the six or the seven last time got rewarded. Going, Did they ever? The biggest biggest price of the meet. Yes, for sure. And and uh, you look right before the last race had a workout. Those figures on that last race are, are right up there. They're actually competitive uh, to this field. It's just a matter of can the horse come back and run run to that level. Uh, at Oaklawn, when it was going long, was going to the lead. I think if the horse tries to go to the lead, might have company. But... A repeat of that effort puts uh, the horse uh, right there. You're not going to get 56 uh, or $58. but Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's interesting that this horse at the distance, if you have an equibase, you're looking at the program, 12 starts, three-thirds, but in those three-thirds made $60,000. So this is a classy one. And the eight is 30 seconds out. Here's another one that made a little bit of a half-mile move but then couldn't sustain as Magic Tiger just drew off and Warrior's Map picked up the pieces for second. 30 seconds out, does offer speed to the race, but with House Limit and Quinto Sol in here, I, I don't think that's going to be the best place to be in post position number eight. Jorge Carreno either has to gun for the lead or sit back and try and make a late charge. Let's go to our wagers here in race number seven, Stretch. All right. A very simple one. That is simple. Yeah, and I'm I'm liking the price quite a bit at nine to two. I didn't think I'd get that. Uh, Forty to win on two. We're not going to do a stretch change alert. All right, and I like two and four. Couldn't really decide, so I went five dollar tractor two four two four with five six and seven one dollar one six. But I have a five dollar one, so thirty dollars. Good luck with all your wagers here in race number seven. And we'll see you back tomorrow, 645 Central, for ASD Live. on the track for race number seven they're gonna go one mile for eighteen thousand five hundred dollars number one is house limit owned and trained by elton dickey with chavi and chow number two is kinto Saul, owned by crystal cates and gonzalo anderson trained by gonzalo anderson with dane nelson Number three is Monstradamus, owned by Windancer Stable, trained by Wendy Anderson with Ronaldo Cumberbatch. Number four is Explosive, 
owned by Arneson Farms, trained by Steve Kaplan Jr. with Antonio Whitehall. Number five is Go Start, owned by Back on Track Stables, trained by Jennifer Jordan with Nyron Austin. Number six is Warriors Map, owned by Henry Witt Jr., trained by Jerry Gorno with Praven Badry. Number seven is Roaming Union, owned by Ray Cotto Jr., trained by Tom Gardipe Jr. with Demario Bino. Running out the field is number eight, 30 seconds out, owned by Ira Donald and King Couture, trained by Jerry Brown with Otege Carreño. Classic high five wagering here in race seven. They go to post in three minutes. It's now two minutes to post time at ASD. All right, the boys uh, finishing off the night in a, a high level uh, optional claimer. They're going a mile, which is equivalent to eight furlongs. They go past the wire twice. Here we go. Let's go to the two, an invader from Century Mile, running really well out there. Uh, comes in with after a win. Has one run well here at ASD back uh, in September. A repeat of that effort puts that horse right to the, right to the winner's circle. Five to two is the right odds. Four is going to be the favorite. Certainly could be there. A bit of a price to close late. That's the six at nine to two. I think you can pick up the pieces to help the tribe pay. So let's go two, four, and six. Kurt? Yeah, Stretch, I like the same top two that you do. The two and the four. The two, I think, is going to show speed in here. And the four is just going to stock. I expect number one house limit to also go out to the front end to ensure a hot pace. Speed has been doing well tonight, winning five out of the six races. And I like number five, Go Start. To be the late rallier, I'm going to give you a four, two, and five. Good luck here in race seven.
time. House Limited's the first one in for the nightcap. Quinto Saul moves in. Monstradamus is next. Explosive, the even money favorite, walks right in. Now Ghost Start's turn. Warriors map is in. Two left to load. Roaming Union. Now just waiting on 30 seconds out to the outside. They're all set. They're at the post. And they're off. Stumbling at the start was Quinto Saul from the inside house limit. Shows good early speed and will open up by a length and a half as they pass the grandstand for the first time. Monstradamus on the inside in second. Third on the outside, the favorite explosive. Warriors map settled in fourth. Quinto Saul moving up on the rail in fifth. Then it's 30 seconds out to his inside go start. And your early trailer will be Roman Union. House Limit cuts the opening quarter in 23 and three and has that lead by two lengths. Explosive. Settled on the outside in second, Monstradamus. On the rail in third. On the inside, Quinto Saul in fourth. Warriors map back in fifth. A gap of five more to 30 seconds out. Roman Union making up ground. And now the trailer goes start the half. 47 and two. They're sizzling on the front. And the leader's still house limit as they hit the head of the head of the lane. Quinto Saul on the outside. Wow, running a huge race after stumbling at the start is gonna draw away with a 16th of a mile to go and win by five. Explosive is second best. Third's gonna go to Monstradamus and fourth to House Limit. The Stewards will post to number two, Quinto Saul as your race winner. Second goes to number four, Explosive. Third to number three, Monstradamus. Fourth to number one, House Limit. And fifth to number seven, Roaming Union. They went the opening quarter 23 and two, the half 47 and two. Six furlongs, 112 and two. Time for the mile, 139.
Now entering the winner's enclosure, the unofficial winner here in race seven, that's number two, Quintosol. Quintosol is a big gelding, five years old, by social inclusion, out of the mayor, launch a double by Bright Launch. Owned by Crystal Cates and Gonzalo Anderson, trained by Gonzalo Anderson, and ridden a victory by Dane Nelson. Time for the mile, 139. Now head up to the clubhouse to enjoy crazy hour on the second level. Beer, shots, and wine, just $4.75 and 25% off all appetizers. Racing resumes tomorrow and Wednesday at 7.30. See you then. With those on hand, head up to the clubhouse for crazy hour.